Good morning, dear colleagues. Today's theme is conscious tract of proprioceptic sensitivity. First of all, let's try to understand the synonymic terms. Now, I have written down the full name, full Latin name of this tract, Tractus Ganglio Bulbo Talamo Corticalis. This full name is according to the localization of the neurons. So we can easily understand that there are three neurons here. First neuron is localized in ganglion and ganglion spinale and finished in bulbus cerebri. Second neuron is localized in bulbus cerebri and finished in thalamus. And third neuron is localized in thalamus and finished in cortex of hemispheria cerebri. So this name according to the localization of neurons, Latin term, is most understandable for detail localization of the neuron. The second term is a term according to the authors who have uh, made uh, the investigation in this theme. So, tract of Golla and tract of Burdach. It would, it would be good to say that the scientist Burdach In, or in honor of him was called Fasciculus Cuniatus. He worked in uh, Königsberg and uh, so he was professor of Königsberg's Medical Institute. And uh, also we use term Fasciculus Gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, but this name could be used only in spinal cord. That means in uh, brainstem, practically this term after medulla oblongata couldn't be used. And now let's discuss the function. The main function is muscle joint feeling. Muscle joint feeling. This term proprioception exactly means the feeling inside the muscles and inside the bones and joints. So, in other words, sensation of the body in space. And a good example is that we really can understand, we know the position, for example, of our lower extremities, our legs, in what position they are just in the moment, nevertheless, we don't 
look on our legs in that time. We can feel it without looking. And another function which is connected with muscle joint feeling is stereognosis. Stereognosis. Stereognosis means recognition of objects by the touch. Recognitions of the objects by the touch. By the touching. So we usually can distinguish is in our hand a pencil or pen, is in our hand a coin or for example stone. So this recognition also is a result of conscious tract of proprioceptic sensitivity. But what are the difference between Goll tract of Articulus gracilis and Burdach's tract of Articulus cuneatus? We can say that Fasciculus gracilis innervates the lower extremities and the lower part of the body. But Fasciculus cuneatus, or tract of the Burdach, innervates the upper part of the trunk and upper extremities. So, they help one another to work in our whole body. And now, let us make the picture of this pathway. So, please use new free paper in your notebooks. And uh, this type of drawing we shall use also in future using the studying of another tract. So we begin from down, from spinal cord. I have drawn the uh, slice of spinal cord and uh, these two blue regions in posterior funiculus are fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. You can recognize the gray matter in the shape of butterfly. And then we move up to the medulla blangata. Here it is the slice of medulla blangata. We can recognize the olives with nucleus salivarius inside, the pyramids, the pedunculus cerebellaris inferior, tuberculum gracilis, here it is, and tuberculum cuneatus. This is gray matter of bottom of fourth ventricle or rhomboid fossa. All these details are necessary to recognize this lies, what part of the 
brainstem is depicted. Then we shall demonstrate the more superiorly localized part of brainstem, its pomps or parts of metencephalon. Here it is again the bottom of the rhomboid fossa in which cranial nerves from fifth to eighth pairs are located. And these lines, called uh, as, uh, uh, as uh, corpus trapezoidus, this structure, corpus trapezoidum, it divides the slice of the pons into dorsal part, here it is, and the ventral part, here it is. There is uh, a common uh, situation of principles to demonstrate each slice. Ventrally located structures we draw from inferior part of the slice and dorsally located structures we draw in the superior part of the slice. This principle we shall use in all slices. The next slice is mesencephalon. Mesencephalon has a very interesting shape similar to flower and this structure is so named substantia nigra which helps us distinguish so named pedunculus cerebri and tectum mesencephaly so it's a border between two parts of mesencephalon that's why we use it so this three slices belongs to brainstem and the next picture is the slice of hemispheria cerebri so if person is uh, face to us so this is left hemisphere, this is right hemisphere. Between of them we can find a third ventricle, here it is, and uh, some other structures, one of them called capsula interna, here it is, capsula interna inside of which we can find those structure which we just discuss so in so named posterior leg of internal capsula so there is anterior leg and there is posterior leg which are connected with one another through so named geno of internal capsula and close to geno we can find this structure which belongs to tract Goll and Burdach and the most superficial part of hemisphere it is cortex the most important part of hemisphere because uh, uh, exactly cortex provides all uh, conscious functions of our brain so we can easily say that we are thinking due to work 
of cortex cerebri. This very thin layer of grey matter on the surface of the hemisphere. So, this is some scheme which we shall use for demonstration of conscious proprioceptive tract. So, now it appears the scheme of joint you can recognize two bones which are connected by joints and between of them we can find the space so it is fulfilled with the synovial fluid sure it's it's scheme but we can recognize each detail and now inside of the joints I have drawn these structures which is similar to image of comb and this is tradition of drawing receptors, special instruments which accepts the feeling and transform them into neural impulse. So letter A close to the joint means proprioceptive receptors in the organs of the musculoskeletal system. Sometimes proprioceptive receptors calls in one word proprioceptors. That means receptors in muscles, bones and joints. Then we shall demonstrate these two neurons, body of neurons, and I designated them with the letter, not letter, but number one, Latin number one. Latin number one means body of the first neuron which is located in the spinal ganglion, ganglion spinale. Body of first neuron, that's why number one. This neuron is a pseudo unipolar neuron and that's why from the body of neuron originates one process which later divides into two processes peripheral or dendrit and central or axons and uh, now I draw the peripheral process which called dendrit. So letter B means peripheral process of the first neuron. Peripheral process of the first neuron. And then we shall draw central processes. Letter C demonstrates center process or axon of the first neuron. It passes into 
spinal cord through posterior root radix posterior and be attentive it passes transitly without synapses through most posterior part of posterior uh, horn of the gray matter there is no any synapses here so if i ask you does the first neuron finish in gray matter of spinal cord your right answer should be no it continues to the medulla oblongata without synapse so there is no demonstrated synapses in spinal cord and now I have designated two regions in white matter of posterior funiculus exactly fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus always fasciculus gracilis is located medially and fasciculus cuneatus is located laterally through it these fibers are passing transitly without any synapse into the medulla oblongata so we can draw it this way the first neuron let us summarize first neuron is located in spinal ganglia it central axons are passing into medulla oblongata through special sites in spinal cord exactly in funiculus gracilis and funiculus cuneatus and uh, Uh, and now second neuron I use this designation number Latin 2 which is near these two prominence tuberculum gracilis and tuberculum cuneatus so number two latin two is body of the second neurons located in the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus here it is and then what about the axons of second neuron so we shall draw this uh, uh, fibers with dotted line why with dotted line because really they are passing inside of the medulla oblongata and it is very important that from a left side they goes to opposite side to right side that means 
it crosses out the midline. So, um, part of these fibers on another side of the medulla blangata and then in pawns it calls as term lemoniscus medialis lemoniscus medialis what is it lemoniscus medialis we can explain that lemniscus medialis is axon of the second neuron after the transition to opposite side. So, after the transition from left side to right side, these fibers cause as limniscus medialis. But before the transition in opposite side here, that wasn't limniscus. That was fibre arcuate interna. It's very interestingly that this structure, limniscus medialis, could be seen not only in medulla oblongata and medulla uh, and uh, pons, but also in mesencephalon. In those part of mesencephalon, which called tectum, excuse me, tegmentum, mesencephaly. In tegmentum mesencephaly. This is also part of white matter, and that means that practically in three parts of brainstem we can find limniscus medialis in dorsal parts of the slice. They are located dorsally both in medulla oblongata, in pons, and in mesencephalon. So in these three parts of brainstem, medulla blangata, pons, and mesencephalon, limniscus medialis, are passing without synapsin. So it's uh, a long fiber without any break. And now let us continue the limniscus medialis after finishing part, this structure, which we demonstrate now, is part of diencephalon, or thalamus. And now these blue dots, they demonstrate third neuron. And I write down now number three, Latin three. Here, this is three lines, means number three in Latin. It's the body of third neuron located in the ventrolateral nucleus of the thalamus the body of the third neuron located in the ventrolateral nucleus of the sal thalamus. Thalamus, here it is, and it's demonstrated that in this picture 
it's divided into three parts and this part is ventrolateral nucleus and it's located third neuron and what is direction of axons of third neuron more cranially It will be this way. What is it? It's fibers of axons which will end here in the cortex of hemisphere in so named gyrus post centralis and gyrus pre centralis and lobulus para centralis so we have demonstrated that axons of third neurons are directed to the cortex in a special zone which is connected with this function gyrus post centralis gyrus pre centralis and lobulus para centralis and uh, on the way to the cortex axon of the third neuron passes through this structure which is internal capsule through posterior leg of the internal capsule. So now practically we have finished our picture. Let us several words in several words summarize our picture and try to remember most important details first of all this is sensory pathway it means the direction of neural signals is from periphery to center exactly to the cortex that's why we use predominantly blue color Second important position, this pathway is constructed from three neurons. It's three neurons pathway, ascending pathway. And uh, the localization of pathways of uh, neurons we can remember from the name latin name of the tract tractus ganglio first neuron bulbo second neuron talamo third neuron corticalis corticalis means that in cortex it is finished And uh, another very important position, this patient is staying in front of us. We are looking him into face. That means it is left side, it is right side, and receptors of this pathway originate on one side in this picture on the left and uh, in medulla blangata the axons of second neuron of pathway they cross out 
the midline into opposite side. And uh, our feeling, where are our legs now? Where are our arms now? Our feeling, we can understand by this point of the cortex from right side. Our receptors are located on the left leg, but we are feeling this sensation by right hemispherium. It is due to surnamed Lemniscus medialis, LM, which is depicted here, which is part of second neuron on the opposite side according to first neuron. So it's a good example of way of painting of the ascending sensual tracts and please be ready to draw this picture by the heart on the next lesson. So thank you for your attention. The lecture is over.